Dear Russian oligarch, you and your friends control your nation via its fortune and connections. Fix this or get the fuck out. <laughs> With this message, Dan Savage, a popular sex columnist and LGBT activist in the United States, responded to the anti-gay laws in Russia and kicked off the Dump Stoli campaign through his blog on July 24, 2013. The Dump Stoli campaign targeted Stoli Shnaya, a Russian vodka, and urged followers to literally dump Stoli Shnaya onto the ground and stop purchasing the product. However, as detractors were quick to point out, Stoli is a Latvian company, not Russian. Mosaica, an LGBT activist group in Latvia, sent a plea to Dan Savage via Facebook August 2nd, 2013, stating, this campaign can hurt the Latvian economy and the LGBT community in Latvia, which is still fragile and not fully protected under the law. Please stop initiating uninformed campaigns that cause unintended harm. Despite Mosaica's plea, however, the campaign is still going strong. According to American blog posted July 26, 2013, in only two days, the campaign had spread to four countries. And according to the Daily Mail reporter January 24, 2014, in a message to his 300,000 Twitter followers, actor Hugh Laurie urged vodka drinkers to switch to Polish brands in support of the Dump Stoli campaign. Because the Dump Stoli campaign is continuing to gain momentum, despite the conflicting views on the Stoli company, it is important that we ask the research question, how is the Dump Stoli campaign continuing to gain momentum in the face of vocal critics with contradictory information? To answer this question, we will turn to Anna Kata's article, Anti-Vaccination Activists, Web 2.0, and the Postmodern Paradigm, an overview of tactics and tropes used by the anti-vaccination movement, from Science Direct, May 2011. Kata analyzes the activist's online presence and how groups counter detractors. <coughs> Therefore, her article is fitting for our analysis. So we will first analyze Kata's model, then apply it to the Dump Stoli campaign before finally drawing critical implications. Kata analyzes the rhetoric used by online vaccination activists who believe that vaccines cause autism when faced with scientific evidence that disputes their claims. Kata's article reveals three tenets for groups who, when threatened by new information, can maintain support. Unobjectionable rhetoric, shifting hypothesis, and attacking the opposition. But first, these anti-vaccination activists continue to gain momentum by using unobjectionable rhetoric. These activists frame their arguments in ways that fundamentally cannot be opposed. For example, the movement's claims vaccines should be 100% safe and we must have informed consent are difficult to refute. As a result, these activists made it impossible to fully dismantle their arguments, thus continuing their momentum. Second, shifting hypothesis. The original stance of the anti-vaccination movement was that vaccines cause autism. As the model explains, however, when several researchers failed to find the connection between MMR and autism, the culprit then became thermocell, and autism was rebranded as mercury poisoning. By shifting their hypothesis, the anti-vaccination activists were able to accommodate new information. Third, attacking the opposition. As the model explains, activists took opposing ar arguments, and rather than debating the merits of the evidence, they tried to win through intimidation. For example, when journalist Trine Sideros wrote an article on biomedical treatments for children with autism, she was publicly criticized on anti-vaccination blogs. These activists questioned the character of the author rather than debating the information presented, thus censoring new evidence. Now that we analyze Kata's model, we can apply it to the Dump Stoli campaign. First, unobjectionable rhetoric. As posted on his blog, Savage states, there is something we can do right here and now to show our solidarity with Russian queers and their allies and to bring international attention to the persecution of gays. The Dump Stoli campaign's underlining rhetoric, the persecution of gays is reprehensible, provides a claim that is difficult to refute. While we may question the exact claims made by Dan Savage, it is impossible to fully dismantle his rhetoric. 
thus continuing his momentum. Second, shifting hypothesis. The original stance of the dump Stoli campaign was to dump out Stoli vodka because it is Russian. In response, the CEO of the company, Val Mendeleev, posted a letter to BuzzFeed July 26, 2013, stating that the Russian government has no ownership of the Stoli brand. Dan Savage then changed his claim that Stoli is distilled in Russia. After receiving a Twitter post stating that Stoli is made in Latvia, Dan Savage changed his Twitter tag from hashtag dump Stoli to hashtag dump Russian vodka, claiming finally that Stoli gets its wheat from Russia. By shifting his hypothesis, Dan Savage was able to accommodate new information. Third, attacking the opposition. As previously stated, Mosaica, the LGBT activist group in Latvia, sent a plea to Dan Savage urging him to stop the campaign. In response, Dan Savage blogged on August 2nd, 2013, Latvia Shmatvia. Okay, now back to my vacation. Not only did this attack the Latvian LGBT group Mosaica, it censored their argument. Now that we analyzed Kata's model and applied it to the Dump Stoli campaign, we can answer our research question. How is the Dump Stoli campaign continuing to gain momentum in the face of vocal critics with contradictory information? This analysis suggests that although misleading, <coughs> The Dump Stoli campaign frames its claims as fundamentally sound, but more notably, uses conflicting rhetoric as a catalyst to adapt. The reframing of arguments rather than the recognition of misinformation draws us to two critical implications, trivializing the issue and counteracting misinformed campaigns. Initially, trivializing the issue. As the model explains, Conflicting views on Web 2.0 trivialize the main issue of treatments for autism because self-proclaimed experts tout conflicting messages with the notion that multiple truths based on different worldviews are equally valid. Evidence-based advice from qualified vaccine experts just becomes another opinion among many. This is evident in the Dump Stoli campaign because the misinformation caused by Dan Savage creates multiple truths about the Stoli company. By making the consumers choose a side, Dan Savage negatively shifts focus from the main issue of save the LGBT community in Russia to whether or not the consumer should purchase Stoli vodka, therefore leading to negative views on gay activism, where Luis Armento states on Activate July 31st, 2013, I know that boycotts can be a powerful political statement for human rights, but this one isn't well researched, it's not well organized, and gay activists are letting their emotions get in the way. Second, by avoiding opposing claims and using arguments that are undeniable, the Dump Stoli campaign reinforces techniques that can advance a campaign, despite the resulting misinformation. However, these campaigns can be terminated. For example, in the case of the anti-vaccination movement, according to the health and wellness website January 24, 2014, in the face of possible misdiagnoses, and absolutely no scientific evidence to back up the fact that vaccines cause autism, people targeted by this campaign use expert testimonials <coughs> to successfully deny claims that vaccines are harmful, despite the celebrity status of Jenny McCarthy. However, in the case of the Dump Stoli campaign, there is no expert. Therefore, because Dan Savage had good intentions in starting the campaign, and had been successful before, he then serves as the expert. Perhaps future research needs to go to how a misinformed social sciences campaign without expert testimonial can be terminated before it harms unintended groups. The Dump Stoli campaign continues to spread internationally and has shown no signs of stopping. We first analyzed Kata's model, then applied it to the Dump Stoli campaign before finally drawing critical implications. Bringing attention to the atrocities made by the Russian government is vital. However, if we continue to use misinformation as our basis for change, dumping out Stoli vodka may only hurt those who are most attempting to help.